Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to add piping, as you see here, to a pillow. It really adds a lot of personality and makes the pillow look a little more expensive. Now I want to go over just a couple of things before I get started because it has to do with which side you're going to place your piping on when you go to stitch it. So this is the front of this particular pillow and then I'm going to turn it over and on the back it's just one fabric. So this for this pillow this is my back side and then this is my front side because the, uh, the way the piping is stitched on, you want to make sure you stitch the piping to the front. Here is another example. This has a design on the front and then it just plain fabric on the back. Okay, let's get started. One more thing I want to point out is on this pillow, this is my top of the pillow because I want it standing upright so this is, can be red. So my piping ends are going to be brought together along the bottom of the pillow. The particular method I'm showing you for putting your piping on the pillow is what I call a beginner's way of doing it. It's very simple. There are several other ways of bringing the ends of your piping together, but it's more complicated. So for beginners, this is my preferred way of doing it. If you're a beginner, I recommend you use piping that is made by Rights, R-I-G-H-T-S. And it comes in colors, but it doesn't have a wide range of colors, but you can get them in other colors. And I buy mine at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. Sometimes you see them at a Walmart store, but not all Walmart stores carry, and fabrics, uh, carry fabric and craft items but you can also go on Amazon and Etsy.com. In order to put the piping on, you need to use the proper presser foot. So you could use a zipper foot, and all sewing machines come with one, and this is a narrow zipper foot. On one of my machines, my zipper foot actually looks like this. So when you're using the presser foot, you're actually stitching on this little band that is sticking out over here. And you just move along, keeping the side of the presser foot up against your piping. Remember how I was demonstrating which is the front and the back of the pillow? If you have the same fabric on both the front and back, then you don't need to worry about which is your front or back. But just in case you do have a different front than the back, for this demonstration, this fabric will be my front and this fabric will be the back. So this is the fabric I will attach the piping to. On all four corners, you want to mark it where the quarter inch is from your raw edge. So I've put my quarter inch a line on a ruler and then I did a little mark either with a pencil or maybe a little piece of chalk. A pencil is easier. And again, you do this on all four corners. You can either use straight pins to hold your piping on, or you can use clips if you prefer. Now, I put a little mark right there on this piping because this is where I'm going to have the two ends meet when I come around. So as you're pinning down here, you want to go ahead and where that quarter inch mark is, you want to take a pair of scissors and cut the piping up to the stitches that are on there. But make sure you don't cut through the stitch line. So what I like to do is I will stitch down along here. And to begin with, I'm only going to stitch maybe an eighth of an inch away from the raw edge. And I'm doing a little bit of a basting stitch. Don't make it too large, but just a basting stitch. And this is just to temporarily hold it in place before we layer front and back sides together. So stitch down to here. And then when you get down to where your little slit is, then leave your needle down 
through the fabric, lift up your presser foot, and turn. And then you would want to continue pinning, stitching, cutting the corners all the way around till you get to the front side. So I've just finished my basting stitch and my ends are coming together. So what I want to do is overlap them like this so that it crisscrosses and then you're going to stitch right across over the top. Once you have this stitched across, then go ahead and just trim the part that's sticking out past the raw edge. Let me get this right here. There you go, so that it looks like that. In case I forgot to mention a few steps ago, your piping is placed on the pretty side of your fabric. So that's where I'm placing it, on the pretty side. Don't place it on the not so pretty side. So place it on there. So once you've got your piping, uh, the basting stitch done, you've got this all trimmed up correctly and closed. Now you're going to place the fabric for the back of the pillow on top of the piping. And this is my pretty side of the fabric. So I'm gonna put pretty side down. And you can use clips or straight pins to hold your layers together. I found at this point, uh, clips was a little easier for me to do. Then you're gonna indicate an opening. And your opening is, I wouldn't recommend you have your opening on top of where your two piping ends come together. Go off to the side. Now this is just a small sample pillow, but when you do a regular size pillow, you will have plenty of room to leave an opening. So you wanna leave your opening large enough for your hand to slip through. On each side of the opening, you want to do a back stitch. So I'm going to start on this end of my opening and I'm going to back stitch. And I'm going to place my presser foot right here up against the uh, piping. You can see it. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but if you press down on it, you're going to see it. And as you're stitching, you're going to stitch right up against it. Make sure you've moved your needle to the side towards the piping. So there's a little button on your machine where you should be able to shift that needle over to one side. And then you're going to go ahead and stitch around the corner and then continue stitching all the way around. And usually what I do when I get to a corner, I kind of le leave my needle down so I can easily turn the fabric. Then once you get to the other side of the opening, you back stitch. After stitching, now you're gonna trim some of the corner fabric off at all four corners. So I'm just gonna go across like this. And I might take a little bit more off of each side if I feel I need to. Whoops, just a little bit more. And then a tiny dab here. After you've done all four corners, then at your opening, this is where my opening is, I'm gonna fold this back and just finger press it. Or you can use your iron at your ironing board if you want. And by putting a little crease there in the fabric will help you do your stitching to close your opening up. So after all of this is done, then reach inside and turn it front side out. So, so far, this is what your uh, little pillow should look like. Here's my front, here is my back. Now, here is where the opening is, right here. So after you've pushed out all your corners, you have to reach in with your hand and, and just push on them a little bit. Now it's time to take your polyfill stuffing. That's what I'm using in this demonstration. If you're gonna use a pillow form, then of course you need to leave a really giant opening and you would only stitch a little bit towards the corner down in here and it'll make it easier to close it later. When you have your polyfill stuffing, you wanna just break it up so it's not clumped together too much. And then take it and begin filling in. Now when you push it back, you wanna 
push it towards your corners first, then fill it in back here, and then continue filling it into the front. So after you've put either your pillow form in here or your stuffing polyfill, then you want to close this up. And so from the back side here is where you're going to do it because you want to do it on this side of your piping where it's not stitched to the back fabric. And you can either do a whip stitch or a ladder stitch. A whip stitch, you just kind of whip around and grab both sides of the fabric. Um, but if you want to do the ladder stitch, which is my preferred stitch, because it looks really nice when it's done, then I'm going to have a link down below your YouTube screen in the description section. So you just click on the word uh, more, it will expand open and you will see other links appearing down there. One of them, of course, will be the ladder stitch. I will also have some tutorials on how to make some other types of pillows, including a slipcover pillow. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something new. Don't forget to check out all those links in the description section. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Make sure you also go and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl. This is Manny and this is Scotty. See you next time.